Nigeria's dependence on its hydrocarbon deposits has lasted for more than 60 days. With the global shift in focus to renewable sources of energy, the country is gradually being sucked into a race against time to comply with international conventions against greenhouse gas emissions for climate change mitigation. Well, Damlala Hamjede is the CEO and founder of the Youth Sustainable Development Network, and he joins us now to talk about the energy landscape in Nigeria. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, let's talk about the current state of Nigeria's energy infrastructure. It has, Nigeria has one of the highest energy access deficits in the world, despite its significant fossil fuel resources. What do you think the primary reasons are for this paradox and how, um, what can we do? What are the steps that we need to take to make sure that we are on point to getting back on track? Yes, thank you very much for the question. So when it comes to energy development, we also have to understand that economic prosperity is a dividend we get from having enough energy. And so in addressing that, we also have to understand that there are key issues that we are currently being faced as far as the sector is concerned. Mm -hmm. So the first of which is, we know is the infrastructural deficits. So I can tell you that, for example, Nigeria has an installed capacity to generate, transmit, and distribute electricity of around 13 gigawatts. Mm -hmm. Well, we are only able to generate, transmit, and distribute only 4.5 gigawatts. So that's to tell you that what we have in store can do more than what we are currently getting. And so one of the key issues that, as far as that is concerned, has been that there is an infrastructural deficit when it comes to transmitting and distributing electricity. Another crucial aspect is finance. Finance is very important. And so the government has a key role to addressing the financial gap. And so in doing this, we also have to understand that there is a way we can clearly blend finance through public, private, and philanthropic investment. And this way we can get to achieve what we want to achieve. I'll tell you that Nigeria needs to spend $34.5 trillion to achieve full electricity by 2030. That's a lot of money we need, right? And so to drive the investments at the pace that will command prosperity in the sector, it is important that we leverage funds that we are getting, for example, to the African Development Bank that was recently given to Nigeria, the Economic Governance and Energy Transition Support Program, a $500 million um, fund to address energy and um, promote energy renewable in as far as the sector is concerned. Of course, there's also the DERS program, which is the distributed access for renewable energy scale up in Nigeria, $750 million. So all of this money, we need to be able to consolidate to address infrastructural deficits. And of course, also make way for more investments to come. And this is where we then have another point, which is the need to put in regulatory frameworks that would promote investment as far as the sector is concerned. And so in all of this, another thing that we also need to do is to ensure that we have skilled labor. So by 2030, if we want to achieve clean energy at the level that Nigeria wants to be, which is 30% as, as, as stated, it is important that we have at least 10,000 skilled people in the sector. And right now, as I speak to you, we are far from that. So putting all of this in mind and addressing them definitely would allow us to thrive as far as the energy sector is concerned. All right. Now, uh, thank you so much for highlighting that. It's a, it's a slightly morbid and concerning picture. But when we bring renewable energy into the conversation, there's some worry because we're very bullish. We've become very bullish over the past few months uh, around CNG and getting yes. CNG out there. And some people are saying, well, this is kind of going in the, the opposite direction yes. to where we're supposed to be going. So what are some of your thoughts around our introduction of CNG and how you know, the vision is ultimately to make our economy more dependent on CNG as opposed to uh, us you know, driving more of that focus into renewable energy sources? So it depends on how you see the conversation. Some part of the world, some people believe CNG is a renewable type of energy because it emits less, less at CO2. So I can tell you that Nigeria currently is able to generate electricity through natural gas at 84% of what we have. And then only 16% thereabouts is on hydropower. So for, for me personally, it's, it is a good way to go, especially that we're looking into the future. So we have to be able to make do of what we have right now. So I, I think leveraging on that as we transition into the major agenda of achieving net zero by 2060 with Nigeria, I think it's it a fantastic idea and it's a welcome idea by me.
right, then I want to talk to you about our dependence on fossil fuels and the potential of solar energy. First off, given this global shift towards renewable energy, it seems as if Nigeria is still, you know, heavily reliant. I mean, even with everything that is going on, the refineries not producing enough, uh, you know, barrels per day and all of that, it seems as if we're still stuck on that. And then the potential of solar energy. Nigeria has abundant solar resources, yet solar energy only contributes a small fraction to the national grid. So why are these two, like if we just look at these two things, do you think it could contribute to our, the future of renewable energy? Definitely, absolutely. I mean, solar, we have high solar power that we can get as far as Nigeria is concerned. Definitely, it's a way to contribute in. And just as I mentioned before, I am aware that the government recently got a support from the African Development Bank, one of which is to integrate solar energy into the Nigerian on-grid system. Mm. So that way, we are expected to move in that level. So definitely, I, I think solar has a huge role to play, to play. And then moving forward, I also think that when we also look at crude oil, we have to understand that 80% of oil generated into Niger brought into Nigeria are exported. Mm. So at the end of the day, we have to understand that we need money, we need investment. Mm. And nobody's going to invest if there are no certain regulatory frameworks that promote that. And that's why I said again earlier that we need to leverage private investment. We need the private sector support. The, the, the energy sector is different. It's not like the telecommunication sector where you can generate and then you don't have to bother about how it, it gets transmitted. But for the energy sector, generation is on one path where we have the IPPs, transmission is on one path and distribution is on one path. So it's a whole lot and we need a lot of financial powers to be able to drive at the level prosperity demands. So again, creating a regulatory framework would allow us to get adequate investments that would not only even promote solar energy, that can go as far as even promoting the future, the fuel for the future, which is known as hydrogen. So all of this would definitely not leave us behind, but we need money. And once we are able to drive investment that the energy sector demands, economic prosperity also comes in hand. Right. We need more money. We need that investment to come in. Mr. Damilola Hamid, this has been a fantastic conversation. You're clearly very knowledgeable in this field. Uh, so we look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you so much for your Thank time you today. Thank you very much for having me.